I'm not really a fan of that whole like DJ booth culture thing where you turn the DJ booth into like a de facto green room or VIP set. Actually, it's a VIP section nowadays, right? The DJ booth is like a VIP section nowadays. I don't really like it. I think DJ booths should be left only for the DJs and the artist. That's it. No one else needs to be there, right? In my personal opinion, I don't think anyone else needs to be in DJ booth apart from the artist. But there are some people who make that whole DJ booth culture thing work visually, right? They make they, they turn it into a bit of a party. It turns into a bit of a turn up. And maybe the people behind the booth actually make the people in the crowd get really hype. Like when you're dancing and you're kind of flailing in energy, it's probably nice to look up at the crowd, look up at the DJ booth and see the DJ going crazy, like Patrick Mason, or the or the people behind the booth having a really good time. And one people that do it really well is this group called Kinda Music. Kinda Music do this really fucking well. There's this group called Kinda Music with these three DJs called Adam Port, Ramfa, and Anmi. And they have a really good culture of people standing behind the booth with them, right? I'll get actual a little picture here so I can see you show you what I mean. But when Kinda Music play they do a really good job of having people behind them in the booth while they're fucking enjoying themselves, right? And it actually does look like fun. I'm not going to lie. It does look like a lot of fun. The people behind the booth kind of add to the atmosphere of the fucking rave itself. Um, here it is on the screen. You see the kind of music um, cloud thing with the name on it. You see all these bodies at the back here having a dance. This is the free kind of music DJs obviously there. So the DJ booth culture thing is like a thing for them right the vip section behind their back whatever with their friends and family all having a laugh and it's all kind of you know jovial everyone's hugging each other loads of air kisses maybe people are passing around baggies and shit but it works for them so this is all well and good but what i hate with people like this is this type of attitude and again this is very nitpicky and probably most people won't care or won't understand what i'm talking about but i completely do hate this type of attitude where you invite people up there to kind of add to the atmosphere of the rave. You make it part of your brand. And then you start to do this, I want to say it's a big time thing, but it's almost kind of like unnecessarily rude. Because if you don't have people behind there, then this wouldn't happen anyway. Let me play the clip for you. So as you can see there, there's a guy here in the glasses who's really excited, having a good time, and he's like air, he's like air pretending to dial the knobs as the DJ here, um, I think this is and me, is playing. He's not really impeding and me when he's playing. He's not really close to the mixer, really. There's tons of people around right next to him, right up his bum. So it's not like he's the only one there. But then when Adam Port rocks up to the DJ booth, he takes it upon himself to tell the guy to like, relax. It's like, motherfucker, look around us. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's kind of here. I'm just happen to be the one guy that's like, you know, air knobbing the fucking mixer in the air. Why are you telling me to relax? Why don't you move everybody back and then I wouldn't fucking be here in the first place? It's just that attitude. I don't, and again, maybe it's just me. I just, it, I, like, I don't want anybody in the booth anyway. But if you're going to have people in the booth, don't pick me up because I don't, because the, the thing, the, the main issue he has, this guy here that's, you know, gurning and having a good time, he doesn't have tits. If he had tits and really soft, wet, buttery lips and he had that Sydney Sweeney, like landed on her head kind of like bonk look about her, right? He wouldn't have touched him and said him, told him to chill out. But the fact that it's some dude in some glasses and a fucking, you know, body warmer, it's like, bro, back off, man. Let the whores come through. You're not a whore, so you can back up over there. But it's like, bro, I'm having a good time. Why are you telling me to relax? <laughs> Look, he's not even that he's not even that close. Look how far away the mixer is. The mixer's here. There's a lady here. There's a woman standing behind him. Another guy there. There's loads of people behind the DJ. But Adam Port picks out this particular dude because he looks like a a Swiss finance bro, right? He looks like a finance bro from Zurich who's who's like on fucking spring break. Whatever. He's probably not the coolest looking guy in the world, but he's having a good time. Leave him alone. He paid his ticket. He paid his fucking price. He he got his wristband. He's got a fucking pocket full of eight balls. He might, you know, willingly or by force, you know, do have some sexual relations with a young lady in his hotel later. So what? Let him do his thing. Look, 
he, he, he tells him to go to the back. He points to the back. Adam Paul, smug face, points to the He tells him, hey, you got a dick and balls. You got to go back there. <laughs> You're not a 21 year old girl from fucking Spain that wants an intern for us. You gotta go back over there. You've got a beard. You gotta go back over there, bro. Like, can you imagine the fucking like? If you t honestly, this is this is why sometimes when it comes to the scene, I don't really ingratiate myself or I don't I can't really blend in too well because I'm too much of a normal person. As much as I love the music, I love the scene, and eventually I will become like a fucking, you know, world famous fucking DJ out here touring the world and whatnot. There's a part of me that's still like a normal guy. And I'm just not gonna let some guy just touch me and tell me where to go. Like, who the fuck are you? Get your fucking hands off me. And then that immediately turns into a confrontation. That immediately turns into an altercation. And now suddenly we're fucking rolling on the floor, covering ourselves in fucking, you know, in fucking vodka and gin and you know girls are screaming now you know whatever like it's just gonna be a situation we're gonna be wrestling on the floor like you know like some real gay boys and then what for nothing but why are you telling me to leave just because i don't have a vagina <laughs> and obviously the guy got cucked he told him to calm down he's like yes adam you're the prof you're the professional dj yes adam can i suck your dick he's like nah you're not a fucking 19 year old girl from Barcelona. You don't get to suck it. Look, there's a girl, there's a girl there with a, with an amazing set, by the way, standing right there. Look, Adam Port didn't tell her to move, did he? Adam Port didn't tell this this girl right here. He didn't tell this girl right here with the fucking um, you know, young lady milkers. He didn't tell her to move, did he? He didn't tell this 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 fucking snow bunny, eh? He didn't tell this fucking, you know, um Gothenburg hottie huh he didn't tell this fucking <laughs> Copenhagen <laughs> Copenhagen slaw to move she gets to stay but my guy in a body warmer or the body vest he gets told to go to the back justice for the Zurich finance bro justice for the Zurich finance bro with the circular glasses he did nothing wrong he's just having a good time Everyone does this. He's doing that thing that normie girls. Remember, that's what the thing that normie girls do, right? Um, normie girl DJ. It's that it's that thing they do. DJ booth, right? It's that picture that all the girls do when they're just playing. They want to put the headphones on and they pretend they're playing. Do you know what I mean? He's doing that like boy version of that. Like you know, like yeah, like this. See, this thing hit right here. The that's the DJ, and then they come in like. They want to fucking take a picture. That's what. He, that's all he's doing. It's fucking harmless. Let him do his thing and then just like usher him to the back. We don't need to tell him to fucking, oh, relax. Go back there. You have no peanut. You have no vagina. Like, fuck off. And I, and I normally like Adam Paul, but he does have a little bit of a, I don't know. He comes across like he's got that kind of, you know, he's got that sort of attitude where he'd give you like a, he'd give you a handshake where he kind of would like t only touch your fingers. That's kind of limp wristed one. He seems like a bit of a cunt. I'm not gonna lie. Just observation wise, the other guys seem pretty cool, but Adam Paul always seemed a bit like a cunt. Look, there's actually look, there's two. There's two Gothenburg hotties. There's one there and one there. They don't get told to move, and they're right next to Anmi, right up to his shoulder. As he's walking by doing his DJ thing, he's probably, his elbow's probably brushing their fucking scandy tits. Their Ikea fucking boobs are probably getting scrubbed, but, but they, they don't get told to move. Oh, there's another hottie right there, right next to him. She don't get, she doesn't get told to move either. <laughs> oh, honestly, it's so hard being a straight male in the dance music scene. Because most DJs don't want you to talk to them because you're a dude. And most parties you go to cater towards like the LGBTQ crowd anyway. And they don't want you in a party because you're going to, you know, try and fuck everything that moves. Being a straight dude in the dance music scene is kind of hard. I'm not going to lie. Justice for straight males. Justice for straight males. Anyway, that's it. That's like the Zinger Show. Episode number 778.